everyone, and welcome to The Right Perspective. Today, we are reviewing a movie that was released less than a week ago on Netflix, The 40-Year-Old Version, starring, written, and directed by Rada Blank. This story is about, it's basically a fictionalized version of herself. And the film actually won the directing prize after its world premiere at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival. And I cannot wait to get into it. Um, we're going to discuss plot and direction, characters and acting, cinematography and sound and music. But for the fans of the Right Perspective podcast, you're probably thinking, OMG, you guys are talking about a current film. Uh, normally we talk about, you know, films that are already arguably classics. And that's part of our, our, the way that we're selecting content. But this film, we believe will be a classic for many reasons, for this moment, for its awesomeness. This, this, this will absolutely be considered a classic. And so we're getting a jump. We're getting a jump on it. So first, to kick things off, we need to introduce ourselves, and then we are going to decide on a voting symbol that we will use to rate this movie at the end. Uh, bro, kick us off. Hi, I'm Aubrey Wright. I am the oldest. I'm Janaya Wright. I'm the middle. I am Brittany Wright, and I'm the youngest. And, we and she only <laughs> pronounces that middle syllable when she's recording, <laughs> because... She's Britney <laughs> in every other circumstance. First of all, it's your name. You get to name. decide. It's your name. True that. True that. True that. True that. My name. True that. True that. <laughs> and I'm on board. I'm on okay. board. Okay. I'm, I'm on board. You know what y'all reminded me of? Our father's name was Aubrey, also. But there were people who his entire life called him Ar Arby. Arby. <laughs> It's like, that's definitely not it. It's a rest. <laughs> that's right. You're thinking of roast beef. That's our day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so you mean like, you, you mean like how, how, how Brittany says my name when we're not recording? Correct. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. 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 There you go. <laughs> <Your name. laughs> how would you even spell that? Arbery. That is. Arbery. <laughs> <laughs> you got the gist. All right. I'm sorry, Janai. I derailed That's the whole good. situation. I'm sorry. It, it, no, this is good. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> because the people need to know the truth. They and that's what this know. podcast is about. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, bro, I'm just saying that syllable shows up. Us. I'm just yeah. saying that syllable, that middle syllable in Britney shows up when we're recording. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like whenever we say our names, we should like at the end be like, and that man's the right perspective. Like something like that after we've all said our names. Like, Can you be in charge of it? We are the right. <laughs> we have to, oh my gosh. let's try it. Should we try it? <laughs> all, all together. Uh, all together. <laughs> this is the right perspective. This is okay. good. I'll be One, ready two, when we do three. it later. This, this is, is the right, right perspective. perspective. We did so good that first. Listen, that was good. All right, listen, we'll integrate look, it. Look, look, look. We'll integrate it for the future. By the end, I'm gonna be ready. I have to mentally get it together. But I'll be ready <laughs> by the end of the podcast to do it. Okay. I, I have to. It's like getting into a pool. I gotta sure. ease myself into that sure. level of corniness. That's I'm ready. I'm a, I'm about yeah. it. <laughs> all right all right well let's get started we we always start with a recap and our recaps are recaps so they're they have spoilers in them and normally it doesn't matter because we have been doing movies from the 70s from the 90s right, right, right. so it doesn't matter but want to just name that this recap has spoilers in it so spoiler <laughs> alert spoiler alert Spoiler alert. <laughs> you have been it's not going to take away from your ability to watch and love and enjoy this movie, but there are spoilers. So the main character, Rada, is a playwright that had had really great trajectory early in career, having won prizes like best playwright sub 30 under 30, but her career has stalled and now she's nearing 40. 
And uh, the movie is really the story of her in that stalled space. And then what she does, she does something drastic to get out of it. And when we meet her, she's actually teaching drama to high school students and fighting periodically with her agent, actually a friend she's known all her life, about how to get away from teaching and back to her life as a playwright. In fact, she has written a play that she's proud of and her agent is trying to get it financed. And while all of that is playing out, we get to learn about her life. We learn that her father was a jazz musician and that her late mother was an artist. We can see that they remain her creative inspiration. Her mother had passed away relatively recently at the, um, at the point in time that the film that the story takes place. And so that mourning process, and if you've ever lost a parent or just a loved, a close loved one, that mourning process is contributing to her lack of momentum. And it, and it is um, in reflecting on her family's legacy of creativity and her own evolution as an artist that she comes up with an idea to make a rap mixtape. Now, you're probably thinking rap, well, that seems inconsistent with everything else you've already shared about her bio. And that's what some of the people in the movie say too, but she doesn't care because she has felt her creativity coming alive with this idea of making a mixtape. She's remembering rapping as a kid and how much she loved it. And she's coming up with rap lyrics everywhere she goes. She's just sitting on the New York subway and lyrics are coming to her. And then she meets an amazing beat maker and it takes her creativity to the next level. Her passion and her skill set gets, uh, you know, gets uh, even the, the beat maker basically gets inspired and reinvigorated about his work because her passion um, is just, it's magnetic. It's magnetic. And then her skill set is awesome. And so she's just, she's vibrating at this point in a way that we just haven't seen earlier in the film. And then suddenly with plenty of momentum in the making of the mixtape, the agent does come up with a way to get her play financed. The money, but of course the money comes along with a bunch of strings attached and Rada has to decide whether to compromise her integrity as an artist and as a black woman to get her work out there. And then she finds herself battling between these two priorities. It's like she went from being adrift to having these two paths, you know, these two different forms of creative inspiration that in the way that she's experiencing them initially, they're at odds with one another and they're, they're, they're competing. But it's so interesting because they are both her, they're both accurate. Um, they are both expressions of who she is, but somehow they're, they're battling. And she ends up choosing the play because, you know, of all the reasons that we all choose the familiar path, right? There, there are so many reasons to um, get back onto the path of success that you've, you've, been, you've been on. Um, and so she finds her, she, she, she chooses the play. And um, as you can imagine, um, there are so many compromises that come along with that journey. And then actually after opening night, after that moment when all she has been working for, her, 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 her career as a playwright being revived, after opening night, she ends up walking away from the compromised play and resumes work on her mixtape. And that's where we leave her. We leave her, you know, I'm gonna say, back to where she started, back to where she was, you know, when she was thriving. Um, but I would say she's probably even better because she's had that, that kind of moment of personal clarity that, that I think we're all looking for, where you figure out what's really important to you and what your deal breakers are and um, where you're going to draw the line. So that's, that's what the story is. So that's the recap without too many specific spoilers. You know, you get the gist, but it's not spoiled, I think, maybe. Let, let me tell you, you're, you're, as always, it was masterful. It was masterful, and the, and and the gist was clearly gotten. Great, great. Oh man, yes. I just and and you know and and because because I you know I was I just loved it so much. I just loved it so much. It was like um, it was hard to do a recap without the spoilers. I just want to give all the details. 
But before we start now getting into it, we have to pick our symbol. We almost forgot, we were supposed to do that before the recap, to pick our symbol, our voting symbol that we're gonna use at the end to kind already of rate. Already picked Okay, so Actually, normally it's a collaborative it. process. No, but, not um, this time. <laughs> Bro, yeah, what I went is ahead. It? I went. I went ahead and, and used my uh, big brother veto powers. <laughs> oh, what's coming uh, up at the worst time? <laughs> don't he be, be Brittany? Nice. Don't he just be pulling it up whenever? It's real unpredictable. Listen, Ain't it unpredictable? It's, it's, <laughs> look, it's like it's like it's like executive orders. I only use them when it's necessary. <laughs> but but um, listen, it's got to be Mike's. Has to be. Yeah. Mike, that's what I had in my head. I did have gotta be. It me. has to be Mike's, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why it has to be. Well, first of all, the whole movie's about rapping, but and you know hip hop as a culture. But in addition to that, um, in her uh, it is I want to make sure I pronounce it right. Is Rada? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So so. In Rada's time, which is my time <laughs> of 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 him, uh, the, one of the biggest uh, things was the source. Is that it was uh, it was a magazine when you know hip hop was to me in its most classic uh, time as a culture, and in that they would rate albums by how many mics. So like if you oh. got five mics oh, in the source. Bro. If you got five mics in the source, that was a really big deal. Wow. Like, like to get five mics. So, um, and, you know, and back then it, it would speak a lot because you you couldn't hear the albums right away. Remember, like right, back then. right. So, like when you would be these albums would be coming out, you're anticipating them, and when you saw like, oh, now it's got five mics in the source is like a really big deal. So, Bro, yes, give us a, give us an example. What was what was a five mic? Nazomatic was five mic okay. album, and that that was his first album mm -hmm. that he came out, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I'm gonna tell you, I am curving myself because I Don't curve can start it. a whole I can start a whole I dissertation <laughs> on this whole because it was such an amazing time, and what I'm just saying is, is this movie brought me back to that mm. because it was such an amazing time that. Um, you know, hip hop is a culture. It involves the dance. It involves the art. Um, rap is one part of the hip hop culture. And hip hop in that time frame, where when she would have been in high school and, and all that kind of stuff, it was just an amazing time. It was just an amazing time. And you could even hear it in the vernacular of how, because I, I don't know about her as a, um, I don't know a lot about her yet. I, and, and I'm intrigued, definitely beyond yeah, uh, beyond too. belief. But, mm. but what I'm saying is, is in the way that she runs, I would bet she was for real a rapper in high school. Because mm. it, it sounds like that um, 90s cured lyricism that was necessary to be a rapper, mm. you know, mm. like as as I was mm. back, back in the day. And anyway, I'm getting off. Point is, is that's why I've got to be like, I don't, I don't, think, I don't <laughs> see your off point like, because listen, I forgot we were talking about Mike. I'm up here thinking about it. All day, all day. Yeah. Oh, but it's so oh, good. Yes. It's yes. so good, but that's when, that's when that's when that's when a film has done its work. When a film pulls you in so completely to the moment that the, the characters are in, yeah. the movie has done its job. And so Aubrey talking so passionately about that time in his life and about hip hop and um, how this movie, you know, reminded him of that time, that's evidence of like story well done. You so know, well. it's like you know, peace is Man. well portrayed. Essence I was, I, resonating. I was gonna, you know, I was kick us off, this. bro. It's Mike. I, I think gonna, we can all agree it's, it's Mike's, right? We, we can agree. Yeah, clearly, there's well, no agreement Mike, needed because okay. there was the the royal decree. I mean, there was the brother, big brother. That's veto, right. But in this That's situation, right. I'm just saying it's very <laughs> it's, appropriate. It's, oh, absolutely. And, and 
can, I was going to save this for later on in the podcast. Okay. But can we, and spoiler alert, I'm pretty sure that we are going to say this is a classic. I mean, you're hearing it from us already, but, yeah. uh, but let me tell you, I went, this movie had me go into the depths of storage. It had me go to the depths of storage. Oh. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Uh-oh. I don't know what he is about to pull out. <laughs> it's upside down, bro. That's backwards. It's, oh, up, just, it's upside down. There it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Bro, there we go. kick us a beat. Yeah. Uh, but let me let me tell you. No, no thank this- you. Naya. No, thank you. No, thank you. She just ruined. She just ruined everything. Right did. She just. She just okay. But I, I I'm just saying. Here, here's the then, point of that, is, he felt it. He felt your support. Your mic felt. That was. I, I just. I didn't know it was too much for me to take it. I didn't know you were that good at beatboxing, and it, it was a lot for me to take it. But I'm just saying, it made me go break out. These are. I haven't looked at these things. Bro, for, you got the tape cases. Yeah, what? I, well, these. Yes. Well, listen. There were, there were several back then. You know, I had so many tapes. Aubrey has like, so yeah. y'all I, need to know. Had, Aubrey has been I a music so lover. Tapes. Yes. So, so like when I finally threw them away, it was like two garbage bags full of of just tapes. Crazy. But and, and you know that that's when everybody was switching to CDs. CDs. And now obviously were off that even but mm-hmm. um but there were a couple of things that I knew I couldn't get anywhere else and that this is me and my friends rapping um in the basement so yeah in my bedroom oh, I got I got a yeah. song we recorded in my bedroom and but I'm just saying mm. the movie brought out this nostalgia to make me I haven't looked at this stuff in I love that. I mean, 15 years, you know, wow. at least, you know what I mean? Wow. I, I looked at it, but I'm just saying that's the power mm. I, I really feel of this, of this, this film. For oh real. my gosh. So, that's so I good. I was trying to wait, but I couldn't. And I actually, if you needed something to play it on, I've got here a Sony Walkman. No, we didn't need to see that. All right. That's all right. No, actually. Um, <laughs> I Listen, believe that's, a fi- that's officially down that's a, that's officially my favorite part of any podcast we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I mean, this is when I can't throw this away. I can't well, see. L- Listen, and that's a more fancy so version. So much that was a part were of my childhood. High class, those Walkmans. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, it had the little you know digital screen on the front, the little counter. What Listen, the whole. Look, 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 the whole, and trust me, this is actually all about the movie. It is. It is. <laughs> it, is. it really it is. is. It is. It's really, because the whole. Because it's all of us. The whole process of music back then was different. Mm-hmm. And it was the last generation that's really going to have that. Ooh. Because when you talk about this, this Walkman, it automatically makes me think about, um, tapes and mixtapes and the process to even because like even when you had cds all of your favorite songs were on the same cd so you had to sit there and make a tape yeah and when you were making the tape when you were making the mixtape you had to literally sit there through the whole song so so music was just a different process like when the album was coming out if if me and five of my friends were going to go get an album we would get all every one of us would go get the album we would all get our copy and you know you're ripping it open looking at the um the 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 whole process of looking at the inside notes Mm. and looking at the lyrics and looking at the producers yeah that was all part of the experience it was and yeah. What just I'm going is, going is, to Sam Goody and standing R. there R. and R. just R. seeing R. rows R. and rows. It was just, it was such an amazing R. 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 It's just it, but it truly is. And it's to your bro, you said it. That whole experience is just gone. 
It's just gone. Yeah. And I actually went to a record store not too long ago. Um, and the people in there were hipsters, you know, it wasn't like people like, like an organic lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that was just the way our lives were. We were going to get our tapes and we were making mixtapes and giving them to each other. I actually have one of my mixtapes here, you know, and then we had singles, you know, and, um, Got a whole stack of tapes. I do like this is Monica, <laughs> like what, like. It's and, uh, and, and just and, and the whole discovery of it exactly because, that was because the when thing you, and it was like you would yeah. treasure you treasure the cover if someone creased your cover you'd be so frustrated Brittany 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 does she have a single I have multiple <laughs> singles Listen. Brittany does she Brittany, I have in I, Vogue I got Soul for Real Ca Candy Rain what I know we gotta all talk right. about we got we got it. All right, look, 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 look. yeah, we but, we gotta. But Brittany, those are that's a stack of tapes, isn't it? That's isn't a it? that's a stack of tapes. But you know what? Okay, I wanna, all right. I, I just want to make. I, I want to make sure right. you all understand what's happening here. <laughs> These are because I I felt like I got this just a little tablespoon. This these tapes. These are, ex these are like iconic tapes of my childhood. These tapes take me back to a moment and, and it is the physical tape that, that takes be, me back to a moment. Look at that. This. Should this is the title of your autobiography. <laughs> Y'all look. These, these are tapes from my childhood. That should be The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Look at oh, that. Oh, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. Okay. That is crazy. And you know what? Our podcast, it yeah, is available. It's available on YouTube as well, y'all. So if you're listening to it on Spotify or Google Podcasts or Apple Music, wow. our podcast oh. is also on YouTube. And if you want to see these top-notch tapes that I'm showing everybody, y'all, this is the this tape is cover top from top the top. Miseducation of Lauren Hill. I Could remember... They don't want to see it. I, I remember going to get the tape. And here's what y'all got to understand. When that tape came out at school, everybody, why were we all just carrying around our tapes? Why are you just carrying it around? Because it was so precious. And bro, everything you just said, bro, about that experience just being gone, because now the songs are just, they're just the button you, you press on a screen. They don't have that, they don't get to hold it. And it, it, this movie brings that feeling, yes, it does. but it's still now, which oh, is a very interesting so well said. dynamic. That's a good segue to be, yep. because it, yeah, because yeah, it's not, yeah. it wasn't, it, it, it's not like um, a movie about the '90s, right? Like right. it's not like that. Mm -hmm. It's it's a movie about now. Yes, but it has the spirit of that special time mm -hmm. that very mm -hmm. very 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 special time so um what's the first what's the first topic plot plot and direction this is our first okay. category you know and i will just say i i, I would i want to hear britney's perspective you know because i think um you know bro me and you are closer to age for rada mm -hmm. you know like so and just and the experience and you, of being a I'm sorry, go ahead, bro. Brittany, did you, were you, did you have tapes? Oh, Brittany had tapes. Brittany I had. had or was it, no, I just didn't know like age wise. Oh. Cause CDs were, we had CDs in high school. Brittany had tapes. But did, oh, you had tapes. I had a ton of tapes. She, um, it wasn't as big as your collection, bro, but she had a lot of tapes. I bought my first CD though when Brittany, I was 14. Brittany's DJ name was Stilo. <laughs> Listen, shout out to 702. <laughs> I actually have a tape. No, I'm sorry. I'll start with the tape. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, so I will just say was when I, Aubrey pulled out that small cassette thing. I remember when I used to work or you know get a little extra piece of change always going to purchase a single at sam goody or nrm and i was like, so excited when i could fill one NRM. of my tape decks up and then go get a new tape deck because now i needed to start to fill that one up so yeah i just that oh. that was a that was absolutely a time but my very first cd my very first single was debrat 
Mm. My very first was the mm. rap. My very first was Mariah. What song? Um, oh gosh. All I can do is remember the music video where she's sitting on top of the bus. I cannot remember the name of the song right now, just because I want to. Oh, but you know what, sis? You saying that brings, and I know we got to get back to the specific movie, but now you're talking about the video culture that we got to experience that was different. Just like the music buying experience was different, the video culture was different. You know, and it's actually, that's actually an excellent segue because I, um, I, and I, you know, we try not to watch too many opinions before we do the podcast. So we don't like to go out and do a whole bunch of research. We just watch it and then we just share what we share. But I was just so taken in by Rada Blank, the person that I was like, I just got to go watch a little bit. And so I did watch and also forced some would say force Brittany into watching it. She was, <laughs> she was on Zoom and I just kind of shared the screen and started showing it without really getting permission. <laughs> Listen, um, I love every second of it. <laughs> it was so good. And it was, it was Rada talking about, um, she was calling it her mood board for the film. And she definitely named like the culture we're talking about. She named that as like her inspiration. She talked about music videos from the 90s as inspiration for the aesthetic of the film. And so, bro, the fact that you led with that and you didn't know, like, she named that as an intention. Obviously, mission accomplished, Rada Blank, you know? Hello. So Hello. good. Wow. Well, let's, let's talk about the story. Let's talk about the story because you know what? This story of, you know, the war, the war that I know all three of us at least have felt between, like, the path you're on and the path you're, you feel drawn to. And I just thought, what a universal tale to tell, you mm-hmm. know, to, to, for, to be with her in that moment of like, ah, I've been on this journey. I've had success. I have a clear vision there, but it's not working. How long do you, are, or do you suffer? What is the long suffering period before you say, you know what, I need to change past. I need to try something else. I need to shake it up. Um, I feel that's a very relatable experience, you know, and mm-hmm. I, um, I wanted to, to raise that for discussion. This, the push and pull of the, who you are and, you know, in the, the you that you've been nurturing that's visible for the world. And then that piece of you that's there and is authentically you, but you ain't giving it no time. You know, you're not, you're not working on it. Okay, so that wasn't a good discussion prompt. All right. Um, oh, so- no, 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 it, it, it is. <laughs> Were y'all just in the moment? No, it is. I, I, like, not good. No, I, okay. No, 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 no. I, I, I think, were you pondering I think, or- it, No, I think, I think we were both- whack prompt. I think okay. we were both waiting for it. <laughs> I think Brittany and I were both waiting for each other to talk oh, okay. in that particular moment. So, and it, and it was- awkward past the point of trying to fix it yeah so well you know what you all right before up. we thing, right before we, right before we started we had a politeness talk with each other you're not supposed aside, to say that well I, you're I, not I supposed to happen and i think we did a, a bang up job well now we're being too polite i think is what we just figured out because someone does have to talk okay just because of the nature okay. of the medium so I'll go because my <laughs> hair is very hip hop. I'll go. Okay. Hair is hip hop. Yeah, is hip-hop. we do have to talk. So. <laughs> <laughs> we, y'all, we, we, we came up with group agreements. Like this is how we're going to respect each other on the podcast. So. We got we got to rein in that sibling. Uh, we do because it really dynamic. overwhelms. Yeah. This. But anyway, um, but I will say that for <laughs> this movie, that for me was part of where I it really resonated with me. Um, mm. Just in terms of her journey of figuring it out, mm. and you have this pressure because of the world standards, um, society standards that when you get to a certain age, you're supposed to have it all figured out, and yeah. everything is supposed to fall in place Mm. everything is supposed to be correct everything is supposed to just all be doing great things which is so funny to me that that's still the standard Mm -hmm. because literally everyone will say that that's not happening Mm. like it may happen for like one out of a million people that their life trajectory worked out Mm. but even then the question then becomes are you truly happy are Mm. you truly satisfied 
you know, in those moments, even though everything you set out to do, quote unquote, you know, happened and were those things that you set out for yourself or was that a predetermined path mm. that you just walked on? And so I think for someone like Arata, who is, she is a teacher and being a teacher, first of all, is, it is tough. I have friends who are teachers and that is no easy Our mother, task. our mother was a teacher. She's retired now, but our mother was an English teacher. Listen, and the children of today, I know people always say, they probably said that about my generation, right? <laughs> but th- these, these humans are different. They okay? are. They are different. Their level of respect is very low. The, but their level of familiarity is quite high. And so <laughs> you're seeing- now, I, 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 actually, I actually think it is different now. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. because um, people, I, I don't, I think people, people will always say that our, we were genuinely uh, very well behaved. We had a totally. very uh, high respect level for people that we were just meeting. Yeah. And um, I have certificates and, and, from about mm-hmm. good behavior. I actually have them in a scrapbook. So I definitely was you, well behaved. I have you, evidence. You, so I'm sorry. Continue what you, you were saying. I wasn't being polite. I'm just turn your camera off for a timeout. I think you need a timeout. I, I just wanted to make sure people understood that we had documents. You should just know that it's good that you <laughs> are, that this is actually on your Zoom because <laughs> yeah. I might have just. I might have just dropped you off at certificate. Mm-hmm. Back to the interesting point <laughs> yeah, we was making before we went to certificates. <laughs> is that, what, is um, what I'm saying is, is that I encounter on a regular basis mm-hmm. people who interact with me, young people who interact with me in ways that I would never. <laughs> That's true have interacted with people I don't know, let alone in the workplace, in the workplace. I mean, so I'm saying it is that it is, but that, but that was obviously portrayed in how she was trying to, these kids were saying some things that it's just like, yo, (laughs) am I here right now? Like, like, they were so rude. Yeah. (laughs) And can I tell you what else I loved but about also, how? But they also what? They also loved her. Oh, they did. They did. They did. They did. They did. They did. Oh. But it's but when uh, Brittany, you made me lose my thought. Sorry. Well, I have one, Brittany. Okay. When you just imagine said, that. <laughs> oh, I have a notepad with some bullets. Um, <laughs> so, sis, oh. when you just can I okay. say my thought before yeah, I forget? Please. Okay. No, I, I loved how 35 on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get it while it's good. We gotta get it while it's get good. Get it out, bro. And <laughs> get it out. Get it out. <laughs> oh, it's all right. It's all right. Hater, hateration in this dancery. All right, so listen. <laughs> I, but I love how the sometimes when people write stories, you get this feeling that they're jamming a lot of the development into the story where, I mean, of course you got to develop characters and stuff like that. But I also love when you really feel like you're kind of stepping into the middle of a dynamic, Mm -hmm. like, like it's cause her between the kids, Mm. it seemed like, cause like when they were doing stuff, and we're reacting. She wasn't really reacting like that. Okay. Because, and you could kind of tell that this is how these crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, day. she's just <laughs> tired. Like, right. <laughs> and you could feel, and, and I just feel like that was written very well. That that line of her relationship. Yes. You know, and it and it was it was so well done that it made her. me it made me sit and think have i ever had a teacher that i loved and mm. um i and, and and then i started to think what about in those very important years you know elementary school and middle school high school like did i ever i'm not even talking about like college or graduate i'm talking about those formative years and i I don't think so. And I wonder 
about how much of that was the fact that there wasn't representation. Like there weren't black women. We had a handful here and there, but yeah. we didn't have a whole lot of black women to relate to. And I just, I, 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 they did such a good job of showing that dynamic that I missed it. I felt, I felt bad. Like mm. oh, I, I didn't get that. I never mm. had a teacher care that much, you know, that I could relate if to we that had real sound relationship effects. with. If we had sound effects, I would have did one right there. Like, we, I wish we had like a, like an explosion sound effect. I'd be like, <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get and I have to say, those two students that were in love with her. Oh, I the fact that they wrote that, that in, and I mean, and I'm guessing it's part of because this is based off her real life. But the fact that that student was 20 and he was. Dylan's cool. We all know that guy. We all know that guy. We had everybody had one. Little guy, his his mustache is a little too thick. Yeah, a little too thick. The voice is so deep. Yeah, the voice is super deep, dog. Super deep. (laughs) It looked like it sounds like it changed and changed again. Yeah, and it's like he shouldn't date his classmates because it's probably illegal. Like you, (laughs) you're too old. So. <laughs> and and you're the what? reason why there's no child left behind. They just want to get you out of here. <laughs> yeah. They <laughs> move it off. Really want you out of here. It, 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 speaking, it's speaking of that, <laughs> speaking of that, can we talk about the can we talk about the comedy? Because please, please. listen, let me tell you something. Oh, so good. The other thing about where I feel the spirit of this movie came from, mm. we had some funny movies in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Like we had some hilarious movies. Mm -hmm. And now, I enjoy TV now, don't Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. Like Mm -hmm. TV now, but it's different. It's like very cerebral, you know, like even the shows that are uh, comedy shows, you're more laughing in your head at, you know, like if it's a really well written joke, you know, like yeah. like you you know you appreciate like, wow, it. That was cl- you appreciate it. Yeah. But but um and to the point where I honestly start feeling like is it even possible for me to laugh out loud, right? Like to have oh, that, to bro. Have that reaction. That's so and good. what I'm saying is, is the comedy in this movie did both because mm. it had the subtleties of things that you would really get if you're a 40 year old. It, you know, just it had the subtleties of certain things, but then it had those explosions of, like we're talking about, like Brittany said, this, this student with, you know, who's like way too old. And then- <laughs> He is then the, pushing up on her outside. <laughs> right, it's like- <laughs> And then and then the, um, the bum, the yes! Oh my gosh! Was that, that was, was my the, favorite character? Oh <laughs> man! I mean, let me tell you, and it was, and and they wrote him in. She wrote him in the perfect amount, like yes. He's so crass that he's so crass. it would be too much if it was like a whole bunch of him. Yes. But like, the same. Can, wait, can I tell you something? My honest reaction to it, and I said this to Brittany, and this is this is another thing about the movie. Um, not moving on from the comedy, bro. I, but it, it, there is the movie is a New York movie. Uh, you know, I just, you know, as a, I've been living here now for six years and this movie is a New York movie. And it is a movie that is made for people that live in New York because there were so many things in it that I was like, you're telling my story right now. And in particular, I told Brittany, I was like, you do start to get um, to feel like a relationship with your homeless people because I, I have one. I have a homeless man that's at my subway. <laughs> and um, when he's not there, I'm like, oh, I hope he's okay. And then when I see him, I'm comforted. Like, oh, there he is, you know? And it's like, that's, that's my homeless man. Wow. And, um, but if that's, a, that's a part of the New York experience. And even like that sassy lady, like... There is a kind of relationship in New York. And again, I'm one girl's experience, you know, but there's a kind of relationship in New York that is, um, I don't want to say it's shallow, but it's like, we're not really trying to get to know each other's names. 
but we know each other. And so there's a commonness with the people I have in my neighborhood where we can literally see each other and we're picking up on a conversation we had last time. I don't know this lady's name, you know? And it's like, we'll never go to lunch. I'm not going to go to coffee with you, lady. But we have like a fun report at the bus stop. And you so simultaneously know her and don't know her. That's exactly. amazing. Exactly. And we're having a shared experience all the time. And I'm totally like checking for her. I'm down for her. I don't know her. And that's what I loved. You felt New York in this movie, you know, and I yeah. felt it. And I shared that with Brittany. And then again, in that clip that we watched of, of, of Rada talking, she talked about um, as a part of her inspiration, and I'm going to say it exactly how she said it. She said, filmmakers that regarded New York as a character itself. And mm. she named Spike Lee, Robert Townsend and some others. But when she said that, I was like, yes, that's what I felt. I felt like I, I felt like my New York experience was in, was in that movie. It was just so well done. It was just so completely right. Brittany gave the, I, I don't know if you're going to remember this co compliment, Brittany, that you gave. You explained how you were laughing at the movie. Do you remember telling me that? We were talking about many things. We were. How did I say it? Really this is this, 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 this look, 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 all I'm saying is this is <laughs> this stuff. is this is the I mean if it was genius, I know I said it. <laughs> this was the best compliment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean by by uh you know process of we know that it was genius because you said it and everything you say is genius, but Obviously. I'm saying, so this, the masses this, understand it. We got this it. was, this was also genius yeah. that, but, uh, so, <laughs> but you said to me, you said that you were laughing to the point where it wouldn't come out. Yes. And, <laughs> and, um, and I'm just saying, yes, that's something that I didn't laugh that hard. But Listen, I'm saying, I Brittany it. laughs hard. Brittany loves laughing. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just. But what I'm saying is, is think about how long it's been since a movie made you laugh. You know, when you were like, hard. Oh. yeah, were, were you? Oh, yeah. There's only only two times like where you were you laughing it can't come out, or when you get a beating back in the day and it couldn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, you know, it's, so you, you sharing <laughs> that made two me extreme emotions. <laughs> you sharing that <laughs> made me realize there was a point where I was watching the movie and I clearly had to go to the bathroom. And I'm in my living room, two and a half steps from the bathroom. And <laughs> all I have to do is hit pause. And I'm not doing it. I'm sitting there like, ah, I just want to keep watching it because it was so good. I almost peed on myself for this movie. That's how good <laughs> it was. Um, unnecessary. Pause it, but come I right back. Feel like if it was on a laptop, you could have took it with you too. Oh, see, you always out the box. You right. You right. Yeah, I needed something yeah. in there. You right. Yeah, you. You guys are smart. For yeah. Not having yeah. Me, having <laughs> this meeting be on my Zoom because then we would have just lost Brittany, and then oh I would have just been here by myself. <laughs> My goodness, so, always be a just, just, Can I can I say my can I say my 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 super deep thought? Please, about you've already Brittany given us her so super, many. Brit Brittany said her super deep thought about <laughs> you know this time in life, but mm. I, I'm gonna just tell you that the plot and the writing truly captured that feeling so well. Mm. And now I'm I'm 42 and coming up on 43. And the thing is about being 40, that's crazy, is that you don't feel old, but definitely young, young. <laughs> like, but you vividly rem I remember 30 sounding far away. Like, yeah. like I remember, I oh. remember thinking um specifically. I, I went to school in Baltimore. I remember driving to DC one time and they were on the radio promoting a 30 and up club. And I just remember thinking like, what are you doing? 30 in the club? Like it just, it was just, I remember that emotion. And what I'm saying is it's like that. Mm -hmm. And now you're 40 and life and 
like I said, you, you saw me break out. <laughs> My old rap tapes would be rapping. And I don't know if that's corny or not. I, I have It's where we it are. Out. It's but, where but we it's are. What it is. Yeah. But what, I, it but what I'm saying is, is that if you all remember me back then, I was much more into artistic things. You were, you know, bro. Was, you were I, I drawing. Much, much more, you know. Yeah. Oh, and y'all need to know. Y'all need to know. Aubrey but, can draw. I don't. When was the last time yeah. you even drew, bro? Our brother that can is, draw, y'all, so well. That's that, and that's the point. That's the oh, point because so well. you know, I was into all these parts of yep. you know music and um uh, and, you know arts and even. How you remember my fro? Of course. <laughs> you know, and the, absolutely. I, I had an afro. You had the until, fro. The fro. It was beautiful. It, it was probably, it was definitely, it, it, it entered the millennium. The, the fro <laughs> definitely entered the millennium. I can't, I can't remember exactly when, when I cut it off. But what I'm saying is, is that even the clothes were expression back then. Cause you know, like I would like to have my, my fro with with the pick, you know, I always had a, the pick I'm stuck in, and so and, hard not and to have the um, album. and have uh, you know my visors and stuff like that, and what and what I'm saying is is you don't realize when you lose touch with these parts of yourself oh. because it happens so gradually, and yeah. just seeing her mm. wrestle with like. Basically, I, like I, I feel like, honestly, you know, I feel like I sold out in certain ways. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because join the club, bro. I, I, I spend my time doing things, you know, in my professional life, and I, and you don't even think about how these parts of you that are so important are just kind of, mm. and that's so. What I'm saying is, is that I feel like she did it in a way that if you're 40, you're going to really feel it. But it was so well done that even if you're not, even if you're a young millennial like Brittany, you still be able to tap in. I, I like how you just agree with that, Brittany. And if you're 75, and yeah. if you're 75, you can watch <laughs> but this yeah, and no, get it. Yeah, it's but, really yeah. relatable. It's relatable. I, I have, it's the it's relatable. Have That's the point. That. I have had enough conversations with you and Janaya both, where you both remind me that 35 is young and I'm no longer going to discuss it. Man, <laughs> well, let me tell you something. If I can give me some 35. Let me tell you something, little chicken. Listen here, little chicken. <laughs> little chicken. Uh, the, other, the other side of that is having a perspective of what I thought 35 would look like. Sure. Mm -hmm. No, there I you understand go. it you two have been there done that but i'm like if You're you would have talked to me years ago <laughs> i would have never thought 35 was going to look like this so you mm. still have that what did i do what did i miss mm. what, did I what am i not doing mm. why am i not getting this my knees crack sometimes like rodas did on the movie mm. listen i today i was getting off the couch after my lunch and y'all did something to my back I get up off that couch every day. And I say, what is happening right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. I said something. Look. I said, went around when I was standing up. And, and listen, you know what? I, Brittany, can Brittany, I tell you? Every, every time I think my love is maxed out, Brittany, you, <laughs> you edge it up just a little bit. Just a little you bit. And I have to tell you all, and, I, and, and I, I am grateful for you, bro, just talking about the 40-year-old window perspective but bro i want to speak specifically to the 40 year old woman experience okay mm. and and i love that this movie was in the way that it was done it was so well done that it was about all life transition it was this was her transition but it was about all life transition but i want to talk specifically about being 40 because i'm 39 and the thing about being a woman who's nearing 40 is that people start to think that you're expiring in so many different ways. 
they start to think that you're no longer going to be as employable. They start to think you're going to no longer be as dateable. They start to think you're no longer going to be fruitful and able to bear children. The people just start putting all of these labels on you. You're literally and, dead. And something <laughs> in our culture makes it okay for people to keep naming for you how you're expiring. And mm -hmm. so that doesn't happen to men when they turn 40. That only happens to women. And so I want to name that because when Rada is, 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 is feeling like she's stalled in her career, people are, I'm sure, saying to her, your chances of coming back get less and less and less the older you get because you're a woman, because people are less likely to listen to you. You know, and then I'm going to speak specifically about the black woman experience. Listen, I, I can't even, you know, just the number of microaggressions that I have to wade through in a 15 minute conversation with coworkers, it's exhausting. And, um, and you've been bearing that your entire career. And then you get to a point where all of the, all of the fighting you have been doing to, to, to get to, to make progress and to build relationship, the older you get, the less credibility you have. Mm. And, and it starts around 40. It starts around 40 where you start to see the credibility going down instead of going up. What happens? Why does it just start to go down? Why isn't the experience valued anymore? So I just want to name that she, she did, a, I think, an amazing job because the movie was about the plot from my perspective. It was a love story, but it was about falling in love with herself. And yeah. that yeah. is what happens yeah. when, or where you have to find yourself when the whole world is just pointing at you and saying, oh girl, you better get all 10 of these things done right now because your mm -hmm. opportunities disappear. Your doctors are saying it to you. You know, it's, it's a ton of pressure and, um, and there's in, in any way, and, and it's so okay. It's so okay for black mamas and black aunties to just put pressure on you and pressure on you and pressure on you to do things. And in the workplace, people talk about it. And when they're talking about it, they're talking about it to relate to you, but still you're like perpetuating it, this expiring of black women. So I just thought she did a great job of, of, of that's why I couldn't get up and go to pee because I was like, you telling my story, girl, you know, because, but, but, but the other thing you do realize as a 40 year old black woman is that none of that matters. And, um, all of my girlfriends, you know, age ranges 35 to 45, all of my girlfriends are, are having this discovery right now that mm -hmm. a lot of the things that we have been really, really working very hard for were not necessarily things that were important to us, but we felt an urgency in getting those things checked off the list because everyone was told us we, we only had till 40 to get those things done. Mm -hmm. So I just thought she did a great job of, of capturing great. that, you she know. Did. And I think she great. also did a great job of capturing friendship. Mm. And she mm. having this friend that you've known since high school. Man, oh, that's such a good point. Each other Man. on yes. your shit. Like the way she did Woo. that with um and even Archie. getting an opportunity with mm -hmm. Archie, getting an opportunity to see a unique perspective of a gay uh Korean um uh per person. And someone who is at that intersection mm -hmm. of being from a, a traditional family, a traditional culture, having to hide that, but his love of theater, his love of art, all these different things, and him, you know, just hearing his perspective, but mm. then also mm. having to uh, be be helpful in this way and being her manager um, and get these her agent and different things like that, mm. trying to get the job done, while even selling himself a little bit. Mm -hmm. in the process getting a chance to see his story Ooh. about what he oh he it was, her that is so profound and like a corner seat at the table oh. you know what he had to do and so mm -hmm. but but them even at the end realizing you know what it's not that we're not friends anymore but we can't work together anymore 
who you are in this space and who I am in this space. They're not we don't compatible. Gel mm-hmm. But I'll still see you on Friday for like, you know, Wednesday Cocktail. for wind down Wednesdays, yeah. right? Like, you know, I'll still see you. Um, but I just really appreciate it. That's real. And that's real. Oh, it's real. It's so real. And even, <laughs> even just her coming to him with her, her wackadoo ideas, he was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, he, <laughs> him just, him just looking at her, like she has something on her face. He was just like, she's lost her mind. Like, yeah. I have to help redirect. I have to. Sis, you just really segued. You you just segued us to the to characters and to the characters in the acting. I we've we've talked about the plot and we've talked away about the. I mean, I gotta say this podcast is really different from our other podcasts, and I think that says something about the movie because we're talking about the way the movie affected us, and normally we're talking about what happened in the movie. And I just, I just wanted to name that. Like, there's something about this film that is special, you know. But sis, you just, tra- you just segued us to characters and acting, you know. And you were talking about Archie, and can I just say, I loved Archie. Um, I thought he was um, not only just well portrayed by the actor that played him, Peter Kim. I thought that the fact that she had a friendship that lasted that long was special. And I like the fact that they were able to show us. And again, to your point earlier, bro, they didn't overshow it, but they showed us how the relationship had to keep evolving in order for it to, for it to sustain itself. They, they talked about phases of their friendship and then we got to see a phase change and you, and so many times we're in friendships and you just, when the, you, you don't want the dynamic to change or somebody don't want the dynamic to change. So then it just ends because you can't be flexible and see if there's another way to, to relate to each other. And so I just, I love, I love that character, you know? Yeah. Um, and then we also have, we got to talk about the other man in her life, D. Hello. Okay. So <laughs> Archie was the agent. Moment of pure silence for his chocolate skin. <laughs> And those locks blown from his head. What a beautiful man. What a beautiful name. D, his name is Oswin Benjamin. And what a beautiful man. And for those that might not have seen the film yet, he he is the beat maker. He is the man that Rada seeks out when she's working on her mixtape. And um, and she discovers which him through social media. To what y'all were talking about with the difference and stuff. Found him on social media. <laughs> Found him on social media, <laughs> sought him out, and he, you know, he is he is the 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 kind of beat maker that is an innovator. Listen, he's not just using instruments; he was using like sounds, like what was it, like Mennonites chanting? I can't remember what he said, mm-hmm. but I mean, he he was truly innovative, and that's how she picked him out. And mm-hmm. she did what she did what it took to meet him where he was, so that she could <laughs> access his wonderful talent. And then guess what ended up happening? He had to do some work to meet her where she was to match her talent and her passion and where she was in life. And what made that relationship so great? Oh my gosh, those actors, they were just so good. I mean, D, he just, he was so exactly showing up in a very real way. But what made that relationship so good to me was that um, they fought for it. They fought for it. It was, it was one of the, and not, and again, but let me just say, I don't like the narrative of all relationships have to be hard. And if you, if you ain't fighting through it, you, you can't make it. No, I'm not saying that, but I am saying that they, when I say fought for it, I mean, they got over themselves. They got over ego. That's what I mean. I'm talking about the internal fight. I'm not talking about the, we don't, we're not actually compatible, but we're just going to be together that we see so many people doing. I'm talking about D saying, Hmm. Rada is choosing her theater life over her music, but I know at her essence that this music is important to her and I miss her music. I want it. I know she wants it. I'm going to get over myself, humble myself and name that thing. And then he did it. And I said, well, right on. And I loved that about that relationship. Yes. He, he pursued the mess out of her. Loved it. So much so that he even took her to go see that rap Woo! battle in those New York, those female New York I gotta, rappers. I'm going to go find just one. Like, this, in this moment of saying, listen, there are people here that are like you. Mm. You can't 
stop because what you're doing right now is creating another voice that is needed in this community. Mm. You cannot stop. You're on the cusp. You cannot stop. And then even for him, you could tell he had become a little laissez-faire, making totally beats, come in, give me some weed, give me some money, whatever. And he got frustrated with listening to the people he was listening to. Cause he accidentally did something to the music and it was like, yo, you, you messing up. He was like, I don't even care. Like your music is not telling a story. <laughs> and so to even make that statement, I was listening to some Charlie Wilson the other day and I was laughing because Charlie Wilson in his song, and it's a more recent song, but it was, um, there goes my baby. I think that's a title. Uh. He's literally telling you this story of getting out his car going to the valet because there was no other space for him to park. As he's walking into the mall, he sees this woman in front of Macy's. She goes to sit down. She's having <laughs> dinner, eat lunch. He walks up, she has bags in her hand. Like he is setting up this visual. And I'm sure. like, yes, I'm there. I'm, I'm at Monroeville Mall with her right now. Like that, him telling that story and mm -hmm. made me think about how that was what D was craving. He was like, Almost as if to say, I didn't know that this is what was missing mm. from the music. Is, mm. is Rada coming in and telling this story? Oh. I needed to hear that because it clicked him back on like, this is something different. Yeah. Something different. Yeah. You know, so. And that, bro, that, I that. thought about you. I thought about you because sometimes when me and Brit me or Brittany pick a movie, it's like we are actually doing it sometimes in to spite, like in spite, like we want to, <laughs> we want to create an uncomfortable viewing experience for Aubrey. And that's oftentimes our motive. <laughs> it's like, how spitefully like can we select? And oh God. And the, December is a thing. Oh, July and I love Christmas movies. Oh, oh god. He's in trouble. We're gonna love it. He's gonna really Big hate Jack. it. But that's wonderful. So um good. and and bro, I thought about you. I was like, oh my gosh, this movie is so good because all three of us are going to love this movie. That's what I was thinking. And in those specific scenes where she was like in the studio, I was like, I, and I'm going to ask you now, I was like, how is Aubrey reacting to her, her, the way she's flowing, the lyrics she's using the, and then bro, even her delivery. How were you feeling in those moments when she was in that studio and she's breaking free? Well, let me tell you. First of all, uh, rap is very, very dear to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it to me is such an amazing art form. Mm -hmm. Just the ability to communicate ideas mm. in impactful ways based on how you're arranging these words mm -hmm. and sometimes even arranging them on the spot mm. and so so much talent because i love the music so much rap translating the movies is always hard for me it, 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 it's always hard for me like mm -hmm. i'm about to put myself out there but like do it bro i am the one person in the entire planet who doesn't like Hamilton, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's not because it's not well done. It's not because of anything like that. It's like, I feel like I'm watching somebody doing, playing something that people actually do. Mm. Like, like it, uh, it, it like makes it kind of gimmicky. You see what I'm saying? It's like, Sure. Like th this is an, and I don't take away from it. I'm saying that's sure. the emotion I feel typically. Yeah. Like, like, like when I, when I, you know, I'm glad that, you know, people are exposed to rap in, in different genres and stuff yeah. like that. But I'm just saying for me personally, making that transition is usually difficult. Um, but first of all, she can rap, which that was the part I was, um, you know, cry, like I was crossing my fingers because that, that would have been sure. hard for me. And uh, she can rap. And there, <laughs> there are a couple of things that are attached to how she developed her character in this um, uh, 
movie. I like how she didn't frame herself as, it's funny, I'm bringing these things up, which I hope is not defeating the purpose of what she was doing. But I like the way that she didn't frame I herself think as, she like would a, love us examining as, as, as like a, a female rapper. She's just a rapper, mm. you know what I'm saying? Which, which I liked. And when I saw her inflection and I saw her, I guarantee you, I'm telling you, she did that in high school. Like I know she was in ciphers. I know she was battling people and, and doing all this stuff. And back then it was so impressive because you gotta think that you would get into a cipher and all you got is words. So you, you got people around, all you got is words. And you're all jockeying for position. It's, it's like, who can put the words together the be, you know the best? And so I feel like rappers who came through that curing process um, mm. is, they're different. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like, like and, and that came across. The one part that was hard for me um, was when she broke out into a rap on the uh, stage. Um, and at the end, <clears throat> but it wasn't because it wasn't well done. It was just one of those moments, y'all know me, where I'm like, I bet a lot of people are gonna like this moment. <laughs> like, like I know. So, so you I have see... to be contrary because you know a lot of people are gonna like it. You're no, like, no, 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 no. That's <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that sometimes you could tell. Like, I know people are gonna love this th this moment. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But, um, but for me, I would have preferred her to just, you know, like say some say some ill like she was, and it just you know, roll out, you know, like that. That's yeah. kind of what I was looking because, um, or, or maybe go somewhere and do something, you know, like, like that, that felt, that was the one part that, but I still liked it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, I still, right. cause, cause it was good, but I'm just saying, um, so that's how I felt about the rap. Like, first of all, she can rap. And that is usually a problem, man, because like a lot mm -hmm. of times people, she's a rapper yeah. who does other things. Bro, bro, she act, she actually the mixtape is a real part of her story. She oh, really, okay, yeah, well, yeah, see, yeah I, bro, yeah, you're saying that, that uh, you didn't know that, but she really did like that's really something she did. She did it as a live show. There's you there's know? a marked there's a marked difference between somebody who actually raps mm -hmm. and somebody who's playing a role. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm just saying, you can see her whole. When she became Rodimus Prime, the whole oh. it's just like because it was Everything just so funny. And and that's look, we, we used to call it, we used to call it getting in the zone. Right. Yeah. So, so 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 you can see like she would be walking around the mic and like you know she was in her timid phase, but then it's just like the beat came and it's just like bam, the the, the, the uh, confidence come across. Oh, yes. And, and can I also say about character development that Usually when there's a plus size lead, that is such a central part of the plot. And um, I mean, it is what it is, just like anything else in life. But I'm just saying that, look, if you're play <laughs> all of us have dealt with, you know, <laughs> dealt with uh, the battle of the balls <laughs> yep. for, you know, so, so we, I have a, I mean, we have a perspective on that. And I'm just saying, sometimes stuff is just normal, yo. You know, and, and, and I love how the character development between her and D, like they made a little reference to like, she was a little older than him, but like he didn't have this speech where he was like, I love older women. Age, age is more, nothing but a number. You know, like, yeah, age yeah. is nothing. Or, or like, <laughs> like, you know, you're, you're, you're voluptuous. And if somebody can't see that, they're yes. crazy. It's just like, <laughs> no, oh and, and, and I'm just saying, yeah. yeah, it's like, look, these, yes, she's not avoiding any of these issues that are real life in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're not, 
it's not forefront. You know, it's like yes. this, that's not what this is about. Oh gosh. This is this is this Bro, is about you're saying something so this, good right now. This is about Ugh. I recognize story. I recognize a counterpart. Mm. And that's what this is about. That's right. And I loved that. I yes. loved how the the story was just so realistic mm-hmm. in terms of <clears throat> because I could see them developing a relationship in that way. Yeah. That's that the, actually, you know, I'm sorry, Brad. I didn't want to cut you off. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I, I, I'll start, you know. <laughs> no, I, I was just, I'm just, I'm just saying. That's yeah. why these voices in, in diverse voices in spaces of art are so important. Oh, because so you important. have, especially right now, with there being this body positive movement. <laughs> um, and really, you have people, for example, like a Lizzo, who will get on that stage, sing, rap, and twerk, do all these different things, mm-hmm. and not miss a beat, not lose a breath, play a flute, right? There's this narrative where it's like, I have to focus on the fact that she's larger, she's plus size, more than, before more than, focusing on her talent. More than what she's doing. More than what she's doing. And so, bro, the God help her when she turns 40. (laughs) Her knees might be okay. Uh, But the fact that you brought that up, she, and and even to Janiah's point earlier about her being 40, only a person in that space can go, I'm going to normalize this because guess what? It's normal. Bless you for saying that, sis. Bless you. Person, and that is just my life. Why? Because I'm walking about life like a normal human. I'm happy. I'm sad. I've lost both my parents. I'm depressed. I emotionally eat. I mm. ride this up. I'm a teacher. I have a boyfriend. I have a friend. I write plays. Like you're walking about life and oh. you're doing it just like everyone else. Yeah. But people box you in and make this situation and de- try to define you mm. by what they want to mm. and they go so far as to make it technical like oh my goodness we're highlighting all these plus size bodies but what about health i don't think that we're having a lot of these forums about bulimia and anorexia are we we're not but y'all are ready to talk about the other stuff so heavily Mm-hmm. And so, and, and, and it becomes an issue mm-hmm. when it's someone like that actually having the audacity to love themselves as a normal person. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it just, you bringing that up, as you can see, I'm very passionate about it, especially being a plus size model, but just me even having to say that is an mm-hmm. issue, right? Yeah. Because I'm just a model, mm-hmm. but because I know that right now where we are, I will still hold that title proudly that I am plus size, full figure, fat, whatever you want to call it, model. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just know that one day it'll be model. It won't be all these the, qualifiers of you're in a special category of no, yeah. No. And then oh, shout so out good. to Rihanna because Rihanna is making everything normalized, honey. I just love it. Savage Fenty, shout out. But but I just love how Rada did that. Mm-hmm. She did so well, yeah, she I mean, it's, it's, that she was trying to do that. You know what oh, I mean? Well, 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 well I, oh, I, you know what? I don't know. And that's, that's why I was conflicted about bringing it up because I didn't want to negate, you know what I'm saying? The fact. Yeah, but bro, I'm but, happy but, but, you brought it up to celebrate. But, but I'm just saying that's how, yes. that's how I felt because what, what a lot of media does will either try to completely avoid it or they will over like, oh, like Brittany's talking oh, about, they'll, they'll they'll go over the top. Excuse me, in the other direction, where she didn't avoid it. She, they they sh- they showed her drinking her little, you know, uh, diet drinks or whatever. Oh. <laughs> and there were a couple of funny jokes yeah. associated with that, but it wasn't the point. You know what I'm saying? And, right. And, it was just her and, life. And, it was and, just and, a piece like, of the. And yeah, she is older than this guy. But it was like when she even talked about, he was just like, like, you know, he just like, and, the, and honestly, I wasn't even thinking they're, about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, the bridge that they were crossing to get to each other was not about age. 
the bridge mm -hmm. that they were crossing to get to each other was about lifestyle. Right. And it was her resisting fully leaning in and it was him, ha you know, I don't even want to say resisting, being surprised that being pulled in, you know? Um, and so it wasn't even about age. It was, it was about so much more that they were trying to understand about each other to, to, to explore friendship. You know, they didn't even, that's the other thing that some movies do. At the end, they'll have some big proclamation. You're my number one. We're in it for the it's long like, haul. It wasn't even about that. It was, it was about like, that. yeah, Wait, I'm with you. I'm long haul again. <laughs> the long haul. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that. They you were just. <laughs> <in> the <storm. laughs> well, that's what they do. That's what they do. And I appreciated that she just was like, they were hanging out and it was just like, we're together yeah. right now in this moment. And I loved that. That, and that, yeah. that made me think of Love Jones because there's that yeah. part at the end of Love Jones where they're like, I, can, I think Lorenz Tate says, listen, I just want to be together for however long we can be together. <laughs> he was like, he wasn't like, look, let's let's thing. lock it in. He was like, let's just be together as long as we can be together. And and that it, to me is one of those, we're in the, this moment together and it's wonderful. And this is where I am. And at the end, they were just together. It wasn't even like we're together now, we're boyfriend and girlfriend. It was like, we're right. together. And, and that's real. That's how life happens. Yeah. And I have to say on this topic of normalizing, you know what else they did a great job. And by they, I mean, she, she did a great job because, uh, I, you know, did you catch it at the top? Creator, <laughs> writer, producer, star. Mm -hmm. This is Rada Blank. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that she really integrated so beautifully is just the process of mourning loss. You know, like I thought, goodness, you know, when our dad passed away, I got to tell you, your, your life just, when you lose a, a person yeah. that has been your cornerstone, you, you just, you, if, if people say you'll get back to, you don't get back to, you have to just find a new way of being. You have to find a new life. I don't want to use the cliche new normal, but it's mm -hmm. that. It's really like um, you have to find a new center because your center is gone. And I thought they did such a good job of giving us a chance to see what that's like, to be searching for that new center. Um, and I also just thought they did such a good job of celebrating the lives of her parents. I mean, mm -hmm. as I was making my notes here, uh, I was like, you know what? Her mom and dad, they were characters. They weren't just like stories, you know, she's like showing the mom's art. And even in her, in her um, conversations with Archie, you know, they're like remembering her mother and honoring her art in Archie's home. And I was just like, her, and then, then she went to her childhood home, which she was struggling to go to because of all the emotion that was in the physical space. She's there with her brother, you know, um, and actually that was her actual brother. Isn't that interesting? Oh, really? Yes. And I didn't know that. see, I, I tried so hard not to do research, but it was just yeah. like, yes, you know. And um, and it was so good because it was like, that's exactly what it's like when you're trying to honor your loved ones, but talking about them is the hardest thing, but you have to. And um, and the way that she was finding inspiration from like her father's jazz music and her mother's mm -hmm. art, you know, and since she had a tattoo that was like her mom. I mean, it was just like her parents being so present to me was also something well done, beautiful. And I would just say unique. Mm -hmm. I have seen yeah. mourning and loss. I mean, we've all seen it a million times in movies, but it's always like this, this cloud or it's like, you know, there was a traumatic relationship that was awful the person's working through. This wasn't that. It was loving parents that were gone and um, her dealing with loss. And it just, it was just so real. I just thought it was so good. I think that's a good actual. Oh, go ahead, bro. Well, I was just gonna say, what Janelle was talking about was a great segue to talk about the cinematography in the sense that Yes, um, and the sound. And the she music. would because because the movie was in black and white. And I loved that. Janiyah, y'all, no nobody knows this, but Janiyah 
has told me she wants me to take her through the evolution of rap, which I personally don't think she's going to make it through the first. It doesn't matter because I have purchased I'll, several books. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. I, I blame sh- myself. I'll show them on a future I blame podcast. myself. But I actually I blame myself for get- <laughs> one of them is it's it's by Vibe. So then, you know, it's like get some validity. So you just wait. Oh, man. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going back to the beginning and dig it into it all. <laughs> no diggity, no doubt to you. Yeah, it's time. Jamaya, I'm getting in Jamaya there. I've just, never been, I've never been more excited to get in, into so this good. academic you're, journey. You're, you're so, Janaya, it's an <laughs> adjective. Like, that's very Janaya of you. But <laughs> but, <laughs> and the only reason I'm not standing but, up to get the books is because the pants I have on are not top notch and I don't want y'all to see them. That's okay. Well, They're, let's no. be happy for the But I want you to know that pants. if I had on regular pants, I would get these books so that you can know I'm serious, bro, about getting in there and getting this knowledge. Well, well I, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted on how that works out. <laughs> But but uh, but anyway, so, yeah, 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 that was, yeah, yeah, that was, oh, that works out. But um, but yeah, the the it does make sense that you say that the style of it was '90s because mm-hmm. there were you know the black and white, uh, especially back then. You know there was a lot of New York sound and. Yeah, like you said, it, it, it you know a lot of uh, obviously infinite video shot in mm. New York and probably on some of those same streets. But I liked how when she was splicing in the um pictures, and, and which this is what made me think about it when you were saying that when you were talking about her family and her real experience, because I could tell from the pictures that even though I don't know her story, that a lot of her story is wrapped in this, wow. uh, based on those are real pictures. I can tell mm. that's a real right. picture because you, it, would, it wouldn't have been like that if it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't have been put in there like that. And to be able to represent your family and stuff like mm. that in, in, in that particular way, uh, was just very impactful. And what it made me feel was that I felt connected in a way, almost like, like you said, I know that a lot of her is in this movie. And it's because of how I was shot, largely mm-hmm. because of how I was shot. And the fact that, you know, I mean, you could tell like, yo, that's a real place. That's a real picture. You know what I'm saying? That's a real versus so yeah yeah and bro you talking about the pictures around i wanted to share another nugget that i picked up in that video that i forced Brittany to watch she um you know you remember that scene when when they were in archie's apartment and there were all of these statues and so many beautiful pictures so they were intentionally featuring black artists and black woman artists And so in a film that was about a black woman artist, they were finding as many ways as possible to promote black women artists. I just love that. I mean, even in set design, she was showing up fully. I love that. I love that. I'm I'm like, I'm I'm like in love with her. Like, it's like so good. Yeah, I agree with that a hundred percent. Of, of that of showing up for black women and mm. then showing up for hip hop and all these different things mm. and something I appreciated was her also the reality of what many places are going through which is gentrification yeah now she did it in her play but I think it even goes to Aubrey's point about hip hop right to where hip hop could it was East Coast, West Coast, you know, you had the way things were done in certain places. And then this is talking about what's going on in our communities, the devastation, the government doesn't care. All these different narratives are happening within hip hop. And then to see it now be in Hamilton, right? Which is going 
around the entire planet and and using this as that the platform of that that's no shade to hamilton i enjoyed it but it was more so as what bro what aubrey is saying like not saying that hip-hop can't rap can have this be a piece of it but this is not how it started Mm -hmm. and so having her having this play that she wrote be about gentrification and she wrote this play and then the play got gentrified um (laughs) sound effect again bro bro do the sound effect again (laughs) whoa (laughs) you're seeing these things happen and Mm. even just speaking of hip-hop now where you have we're gay we we Black people, we really get sensitive about our gatekeeping, right? But rightfully so. For good reason. And so when you have things like every now and then you might let a little somebody in like an Eminem, a Bubba Sparks, a Paul Wall, you know, th- these things are happening selectively. And really out of those people I just named, Eminem is still the one that's like making music. And that's just recently, honestly. But now you have something different happening where anybody who can get a beat from somebody like a D and have any type of cadence that they're mimicking can come out and be famous, like a Post Malone, like a Takashi 6 9 all these, these people that are out here. So it's almost like this sacred thing that has been happening, this culture is being picked apart. And, and so fish. that being depicted in the neighborhood mm. to where have this black business i uh, were a black couple Ooh. i am we, we are a thriving business but now the neighborhood is getting gentrified business owners are coming in asking me to buy my property and now i have becky that moves in next door and she wants soy milk we ain't never saw no so no soy milk in this community nobody drink that no one buys that but now i have these individuals coming in who are claiming my space you're coming in and you're taking it and so just her having that happen within the play knowing that it's happening in real life and then thinking about how hip-hop has what has happened to pieces of it hip-hop rap just the culture in general I just really thought that she did a great job of even now her theater right this black female playwright is being produced by an older white man and her black play is being directed by a middle-aged white woman. This is what's happening about this young black couple who owns a store. This is what the play is about. And even in that, they change her vernacular of the black woman that is playing that character. So she could basically start talking like she has no education. And the young Black actress, she calls it out like, why am I the only one speaking like this? But even in that is, do you still take the job and just say those parts and have money? Because we know being in the arts, you're not just coming out and you're lucrative. Or do you stand up and you do something and you you don't take that? No, she was in that play. And even Farada, she did the play. She made the changes, you know? So just just the whole thing of that, just being, things being picked apart, showing the different pieces of hip hop and just how she just, she just did, she just did so much in just two hours. So it's, <laughs> she did yeah, so it's, much. It's, it's, it's hard to see, um, you know, I, uh, there's this there's a song, Janai, I want one of the key songs. It's called it's by you know Common. Ready for my notes. Uh-huh. Well I am familiar. I, he was in yeah, Just Common, Right, Common the movie. Sing. Did a great job. There's a rapper. Please continue. A really long time before. Please continue. But anyway, he has a song. Moment. It's called That's I Used right. I Used to Love Her. And um basically the song he uh, personifies hip hop as a woman and he talks about- I actually about, know this song. That's how iconic it is. Yeah. That is That says a lot. Amazing. Yeah, I know. Man. I'm whack. Uh, that's, what the, that's what the listening audience needs to know. <laughs> Working on I'm it. I'm truly amazed. I know. But I, I'm glad. Because, 
Move on. We're all grown. We're all grown. It's, it's the journey. What, what was but, Rada trying to tell us? What was she trying to tell it's us? The, it's the it's journey. The journey. And you're right. never, there's never, you can, you can reinvent at any moment. You're constantly unpacking who you are. So. But the sentiment of that song is, is really how I feel about what Britney's talking about in the sense of it's good to see exploration and yeah it's growing but for me personally it's hard for me to put it in that place of you know like like because when i watch it i just feel like like hamilton for example which i got about six minutes into it and i just i, I just could i just couldn't and, I'm not wait, can I, I, I was so shocked when you just when you had said it earlier i was like he watched that, like he. No, I because no, because because I, I'm I'm evol I'm evolving too, and I want to know. I want to give. Yeah. I I think it's silly to say something is you don't like something before you before you try. Okay, it. so bro, you know, I don't know. I haven't been saying anything about Hamilton because of that very reason. I'm trying not to say anything about it, but I will explain why I haven't seen it. Um, I haven't seen it because while again, I have not been um, a person that has been close to hip hop, um, you know, in terms of my own listening experience uh, in, in terms of the musical journey, I have so much respect for it as a culture. And I think I understand the importance of rap to black people and to black people in America in particular. And I know that um, it, it, there are so many spaces where black expression is just co-opted, you know? And so another thing about the fact that, you know, she's this black woman working so hard to get money from white people to finance her, her black play, you know, that's another one of those things. And it's, it, And you see it in every, in every single industry, and me and Brittany were talking about this, all the top chefs in the world are white men, but who's in the kitchen? It ain't white men, mm. you know? And who? And, and if you think about the stereotype of who's actually preparing food for people, it's not a white man, but who's making all the money for cooking? Mm -hmm. It's the white man. And so when I think about anyone other than a black American person having a an explosive, Broadway experience has now changed the world for it not to be a black person. And I'm going to go ahead and say a black man for it not to be a black man I'm struggling with. And again, is it, it I, I, I want to celebrate it for what it is because opening a door is opening it. Now that it's happened, others will be able to, to get in. And I celebrate that. And I know that any Broadway play that's giving a bunch of black actors work, I'm like, please be successful and go around the world. Do it twice, go around again. So I want to celebrate that too, um, but I'm struggling. And so I can't even watch it. And I, I almost was happy that it was hard to get a ticket. Cause then it was like, oh, I just didn't see it yet. And now it's like, I can just turn it on and I don't want to. Well, yeah, so, I mean, the, 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 the thing about it is, is that like in watching it, I could tell it was incredibly well done. Of course it is. And, 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 and I could tell that everybody was very talented. Of course and, they are. And I honestly, I pr it, see, I'm a rapper in my heart. I'm a, I'm a rapper in my heart. You know what I mean? Like, like, and um, it just feels funny, man. Like, it, it, just, it just it just feels funny. It feels like I'm seeing the result of somebody walking into a room like, listen, we're going to do a play, right? But we're going to rap. Meanwhile, oh, every, every, meanwhile, every, <laughs> meanwhile, every, every black church in America already did a rapping play. Just so y'all know, everybody already did a rapping right. play. So that's the thing. I, um, you know, I, I will but say the, this. I'm sorry. Go ahead, bro. I'm just saying to bring, bring it back to what we're saying though. The, mm -hmm. the point is, is that I love seeing 
rap expanded into other genres by somebody who's clearly a rapper mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and somebody who's clearly um immersed in the culture because it's not just about rap it's just a, a whole culture there's a excuse me there's a dialect there's a there's clothes there's movies mm. there's um you know uh, uh graffiti uh dancing just all you know there's all these yeah. things and um it is great to see somebody do something from within the culture as as opposed to somebody observing and and you know putting something in place that resembles it that's right but um but anyway so i i but you were about to make another point since well bro i, I was I, gonna make a point that i think this podcast has been four yeah, hours done. long um and yeah, then we're done, we're done, and we're then done, i done. wanted to i i but you, can i say again like we lost track of time because the conversation we were just having is straight up the conversation about this movie it, That's what this, it is. so this mm-hmm. movie is not a movie you can just sit down and just talk about this is the, a movie you have to it, you you experience it you don't just watch it you experience it and that's why it's taken us so long to kind of talk through it and we're still not done i know we could probably keep going you know but i wanted to as in, are there any other thoughts we want to get out because i had a closing little piece that i wanted to share you know in my top-notch note-taking that i took down i'm good, I'm good. okay Brittany. In the words of our father, all hearts and minds clear. (laughs) I did just want to say how I appreciated her being authentic even while she was on the mic, how she didn't put her bag down. Her (laughs) and that little bag. I I felt like that bag was a piece of who she was. She was Mm. taking that bag everywhere she went. Mm. And even when she was on the mic, she had that bag on her. You know what I mean? So I just just appreciated those subtle things that were happening uh, within movie just how, mm. how she did that and I don't and again a lot of these things I think we're talking about I wish we I knew if they were on purpose or if it was just you know something that because some I like I like how actors talk about how characters evolve even mm-hmm. though this was about her mm-hmm. expressing this part so so I just wanted to mention that too I feel like the okay the way and I'm I'm keeping it so real this is I I, the, I was as you were just talking I was like when was the last time I felt this excited about and connected to somebody else's artistic expression? And y'all, I think it was, I think it was this. I think it was, you know, the miseducation of Lauren Hill. Now, listen, this is probably the only hip hop, like this is it for me in my life. And I think we, there's a mixture of of musical types on there, but I, listen, all I'm going to say is when that tape came out, it, it, it enveloped me and it was, it was so important. And I think we were all carrying our tapes around cause we wanted everyone to listen to it. And that's how I feel about this movie. I want everyone to watch it so I can talk to everyone about it because it's so good. And um, I wanted to just read at the end when she is in that scene. Let me, of, ask, let me ask you one question. Mm-hmm. When we vote, I wanted to say why I think it's a classic. So do you want me yes. to do that before or can I do it when we vote? I think you, bro, if the spirit is leading you to do it when we vote. Let's no, no, no. I'm, I'm saying you're having this closing oh. thing. Oh, this to isn't going to close it all like that. It's not oh, okay, going to close okay. it all like that. Gotcha. No, okay, okay. I was just okay. going to, it was, it's the couple of lines that I was able to try to get down. And I think they're pretty much right from her, um, her rap that she gave when she got up and, and named for all of the white people in the audience at her play, that that was not her play. And she said, it's time to FYOV, find your own voice, fund your yes, own I vision, feel your <laughs> Fill your own void. Find your yeah. own voice. Ugh. Fuck you, old vultures. 40-year-old version. That's who I be. I said, well, I never been one to want a tattoo, but I will just put that right on my forehead because that's Ooh. so good. F-Y-O-V, y'all. Find your own voice. Fill Ugh. your own void. Thank you, Rada Blank. So that's good. it we've checked all like, my notes off now i'm done finish 
Well, we well obviously I think we all agree that this will be a classic, but I'll say I would be curious to hear a reason or two why you think. And I think it's see, I'm not just saying that I think it's a classic. There are a lot of things that have to happen for a movie to be a classic. I agree. First of all, there has to be something going on in terms of timing. And right now, we're in a place where a lot of us are home. We are desperately trying to find something to do, to read, to watch. To, we're looking for ways to entertain ourselves. And this came at a time that's perfect for that. Mm. But also, a classic movie has parts that people are going to talk about. Mm. And people are going to talk about that homeless guy. People are going to talk yes. about that um, old that old lady in the rap booth. And that's one of those moments that you know they put it there just because it was like, so what? That is funny <laughs> that you got this old lady. I don't care. It, it doesn't even have to go with the plot. Like, uh -huh. that's just funny. Like, and, and that is, gr and that's great. And that's what you need. Mm -hmm. And um, the music is oh, great. The, um, she has, the yeah. um she has the hashtags of course that are going to come because of it and it's a rapping movie by a rapper so oh. all of those things for me is what makes it a classic and of course i want us all hold on let me see i want to i want to upgrade from our mics Whoa. i want to upgrade the the number of mics. No, it's not that big. It's not that big of a deal. But I just want to make sure <laughs> I say it, say it correctly. Okay, so um, okay, fine. Uh, all right, we all have one and two third mics, and the reason why we all have one and two third mics is because I want to give this movie five mics, nice. just like it used to be in the source. So. This gets my one and two third mics. Come on, come on, quotients. Bro, I cannot believe. Fraction. Come well, on. I gotta tell you, y'all, I give my brother grief. I do, why? Because it brings me joy. But I gotta say, bro, bro, your analysis, it has added so much to this movie for me. Mm -hmm. I wanna thank you. I want to thank you. I, I I wanted to 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 hear from you because you're my brother and I know your passion for music and I know your passion for hip hop. But bro, the insights you have shared, um, I just want to thank you. I'm so excited. So um, this movie is a classic to me. And it, you know, it is a classic to me because it will always be good. It's like, there are some movies that will always be good. Yeah. And there are some movies that are good right now, you know? And just like there are songs that will always be good. I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. Future generations will listen to that song and it's gonna be a good song. There are some things that are just timeless. And I think this movie is one of those movies. Um, you know, there are movies from back in the day that were so good, but you watch them now and you can't mm -hmm. necessarily relate as much. Mm -hmm. This is one of those movies that will never be dated because it's so universal in the way that the themes are handled. The second reason I will say that this movie will be a classic is that one choice to put it in black and white. And I got to say, I was happy that the Right Perspective podcast, this was our second time dealing with black and white. We looked at a black and white movie in our last um, episode because we were looking at the original Father of the Bride movies from the 50s and they were in black and white. And we talked about how that, 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 that simple, that one act of taking away some of the things that could be distracting allowed us to focus on things that were, were special that we might have missed. And I think the choice to, to use texture to tell the story instead of all of the loud colors that could have been used. Right now in 2020, when people are looking for ways to be distracted, you, you bring that 
quiet message, I think, gosh, you, you, you're, you're a classic. You're a classic for that reason too. You know, so those are two reasons I could keep going on. But again, our podcast is too long at this point, but those are two yeah, reasons. We, 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 we way too long. We're Respect too long. to anybody who's still here. Those are, that is two, two. So th those are two reasons why this movie gets my one and two thirds mic. So the movie absolutely gets my one and two thirds mic. Um, and I would just say it is because the movie helped me in my journey of freedom to who I am. Um, at the end, Rod Rada is not is no longer wearing her headscarf. Um, and it was D who challenged her, like, why you always have that on? Why you always got something on your head? And I think at some point, without her realizing it, it had become like a security blanket to her. So in her evolving throughout this movie, getting back to what she knew, getting back to herself, sometimes we have to remove certain things to get to ourselves. Um, and so that just is, that absolutely is something that resonated with me because that in and of itself, that makes it classic as well. We should, as long as we are breathing, we should always be evolving and taking mm pieces of us off to continue to get to who our authentic selves are you know I, I i feel like we should just never ever just always figure ourselves all the way out there should always be a new piece that we're learning and so at any rate that is um one of the eight million <laughs> reasons that it is getting my one and two thirds mic mm. well that sounds like five mic <laughs> So good. Y'all, thank you for listening. And, you know, hope you made it to this end. Um, we are so bad. We're so bad. Next one's going to be 30 minutes. I want to nah. thank you, Will and Sis, because <laughs> I just, I'm, I want to name, I'm grateful for our friendships. I really am. I just love y'all. I just love you. I mean, y'all are the best. Mommy pays me every week. <laughs> <laughs> and, bo and, bo and both of y'all hair is popping. Oh, bro. Well, that's the right All perspective, right. everybody. Wait, find, 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 your, find your own vision. You know? Find your own voice. That's it. Oh, Bye, everybody. Wait. No, we got to tell them what's next. Oh, yes. What's next? Okay, so our next episode is going to be a Halloween episode. And we're going to so, recap so we're just and review. Skip. So... Just First Wives Club is out. I mean, I'm cool with that. It's a pushback. But, it's a pushback okay. because All right. we wanted first, to push it back. We were initially going to do First Wives Club for this set, for this episode, but then, you know, I watched 40 year old version. It was like, y'all, I can't talk about any other movie. Can we please do okay. this movie? So that pushed First Wives Club back, and then it's Halloween. So right. we we wanted to do Ghost Dad with Bill Cosby because I'm that's out. a wonderful throwback. Definitely considered a classic. We will evaluate it and see whether it is from the right perspective. Bill Cosby can do no wrong. I agree. Except for when he does, potentially, oh. allegedly. Yes. All right. Yes. Well, let us go. <laughs> That's a pre so we'll talk about it next week <laughs> or in our next episode. We'll potentially debate some of that, but probably not. We're not a political podcast. Uh, so anyway... <laughs> That's the right perspective, y'all. Bye. Bye. <laughs>